Hey everyone, GoodRx stock crashed earlier this week after it reported fourth quarter 2021 results. I haven't had a chance to review the numbers yet, but obviously something in that report spooked the market. So I'm going to dig into the results and see what we think about the quarter. My name is Brian Feraldi, and let's get going. Uh, as a reminder, this is a stock that I personally own. Uh, so with that, let's start uh, figuring out what went wrong. So I'm going to start by going to Google and just typing in GDRX stock. Okay, And if we go over to the financials uh, and scroll down, I like to see just what the headline uh, numbers were. So, okay. So the company missed on the bottom line. Looks like they reported nine cents versus 10 cents. That's 8%. And they also missed on the top line. 217 million was expected and 213 million was reported. So that's obviously one cause for the market's uh, concern there. And next we'll go GoodRx Investor Relations and see kind of what is going on. Okay, let's get that looted. Uh, and yeah, this stock took a if you look at the five day, no chart available. Oh, something's not something's not going right with uh, the internet there. Come on. Well, this article says guidance is not the only problem. So it seems like guidance also uh, reported uh, very weak there. Come on. Okay, so we're at the GoodRx's investor relations page. Fourth year result. Announces a 500, 250 million stock buyback program and the shareholder letter. So, all right, let's start digging in. Uh, okay. Ooh, that's a lot of text. It's been more than a decade. We're still trying to do everything right. Uh, strategic priorities increase brand awareness, strengthen our healthcare provider relationships, more relations with the user, uh, consumers, build or, build or acquire new platform. Uh, capabilities. Okay. Uh, over 700,000 prescriptions have used, prescribers have used GoodRx since June of 21. Wow. 400,000 physician offices actively distribute our materials. 2 million prescribers have a patient using GoodRx and our exceptionally high net promoter score is 90. Net promoter score. That's extremely high uh, for a business. So net promoter score is you ask people, do you recommend this product or service? If they say, if they give it a nine or 10, uh, that's plus one. If they get a seven or below, that's minus one. And you add all those together and net them out. So a net promoter score of 90 is ridiculously high, like better than Amazon, better than Google, uh, better than Apple high. Okay. In the fourth quarter, we began offering a new and improved good arc for providers platform built specifically for physicians providing unique features while giving us the opportunity to monetize what we expect to be one of the largest provider platforms in the U.S. Hmm. Early adoption has been strong, with 90% of providers opting into this new mode, which represents over 80,000 healthcare providers and growing. Within weeks of launch, we closed the first of what we expect to be many deals with pharma manufacturer who wants to engage with our massive provider network. That sounds good. Uh, help save millions, mil millions of Americans navigate their healthcare needs. Our uh, pharma manufacturing solutions. Pharma manufacturing solutions is when they help manufacturers of drugs reach providers with their messaging. Offered another quarter of explosive growth, growing 4x year over year, capitalizing the fact that 20% of search on our platform are for brand drugs. We finished the year with net revenue retention over 150% working with 19 of the top 20 party manufacturers and 140 brands. We also have built a very robust pipeline for 2020. Okay. We see significant opportunities to build on our 2021 growth, deliver 2021 strong 21 and healthcare journey. Okay. $4 trillion market, uh, both co-founders involved. Okay. Highlights. So Q4, 39% top line growth that did miss Wall Street's uh, estimates. And actually, let me go back really quick. And just find if this is a company that gives guidance. So if we go to their 2021 results, their third quarter results, 
Oh, they really keep that. Quarterly reports. Let's try that. Q3 shareholder letter. I wonder if they give guidance. Updates. Because that is always when they... I don't mind so much if they miss Wall Street's guidance. Yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, 221 million, 212 to 222. And they reported 213. All right, so it was in their guidance range, but very much at the low end. Adjusted EBITDA margin of approximately 30%. That's not a metric that I like, but that figure was also low. All right, so it was weak compared to their guidance. All right, so net loss was $40 million on a gap basis. And that includes income taxes, non-cash valuation allowance against our net deferred taxes, $33 million of stock-based compensation, $16 million was non-recurring CEO awards, okay? On an adjusted basis, non-gap, $40 million in profit. And for the full year, 35% growth and adjusted deep at the margin and 147 million. Okay. Monthly active consumers up 14%. So they have 6.4 million. Uh, subscription plans up 51%. Uh, so that's good. So for the full year, well, revenue grew faster in Q4 than it did for the full year. Uh, net loss was huge, but that should go away after the company's, uh, after you get a year as this company coming public. Adjusted net income was up 10%. Uh, adjusted EBITDA, yada, yada. Cash provided by operating activities was up 235% and 35% for the full year. Okay. Launched enhanced GoodRx for providers, offering a more customized experience for healthcare providers with tools to support patients through their journey. Okay. Uh, has focused on the strongest, most trusted brand. This is evidenced by our high net promoter score. Okay. An internal survey, 89% of providers said GoodRx saves them and their staff administrative costs. 97 helps them with their medication. 88 helps their patients' medication adherence. Um, we believe it's an enormous opportunity for us to meet providers' unique needs and innovative solutions while helping to achieve better patient outcomes. Understands the patient's journey is not just through GoodRx care with that deep experience. We've imagined the ways patients and HEPs interact with our healthcare system. As a scale platform, we believe there's not an opportunity for us to meet providers' unique needs with innovative solutions. Jeez, these guys like don't know how to be short. This is so many words. Uh, we created a new and improved GoodRx for providers platform, recently launched provider mode. Uh, providers is our dedicated provider platform offering more customized experience and equipping them with tools they need to support their patients. Okay. Um, so what can they do? See can share discounts with patients anonymously. Okay, so they can get extra days, uh, discounts. Since we started tracking DMD, I don't know what that is, but IQVIA is one of the largest uh, healthcare companies in the world um, and a data provider. Uh, I, I assume that DMD is, is in there. Over 700,000 prescribers have used their platform, scanning across all these uh, different, yeah, okay. 90% of providers who have introduced op opting into this new mode, which represents 80% of HCPs, high rate of adoption. We redesigned prescription savings flow, uh, significant increased provider engagement, 2x more frequent use basis, 2x more frequent based on early results. Okay. Uh, become more effective at driving our prescription related offerings and providers reduce the amount of time they spent providing access to medications which we estimate is almost 15 hours per week by the AMA. So this new tool helps providers make it easier for them, for their patients to get discounts and see what their providers are doing. Providers also turn to us for a source of editorial content where price searches and engagement drive significant provider engagement, increase provider interest in GoodRx health. A few thousand articles and videos tripling the size of our content library. The runway and opportunities to continue to address provider needs are massive. Uh, providing features. We plan to add new features uh, for uninsured. Okay. In the first quarter, we added to our provider specific solutions with the acquisition, acquisition of FlipMD, a marketplace connecting practicing physicians and organizations seeking on demand medical expertise. Has exciting capabilities that will expand our engagement with healthcare providers and service available through pharma manufacturer solutions. Okay. Closed first pharma manufacturer solution deal specifically targeting healthcare providers. Uh, it expands our 
allows us to not only drive growth in our prescription related business, but also expands our pharma manufacturing solution by addressing an even greater share of the 30 billion spent annually on pharma marketing. Yeah, that market is absolutely huge. Pharma companies and medical companies are willing to spend big bucks in order to get their messaging to doctors. Doctors are key decision makers. So that is just a massive market. Um, has seen a shift in in-person to digital first, which is an accelerated by COVID-19. Our farm manufacturing solutions offer an incredible 4X year over year growth with net revenue retention of over 150%. I mean, those that's very strong numbers. So the rest of the business must have been weak um, if they didn't hit their, uh, their numbers. Okay. We're in the early stages, 2 million prescriptions, uh, $250 million share repurchase program. You can do that from a, uh, from a position of strength. Um, the market cap of this company is $6 billion. So that's 5% of the company. That's a sizable number, assuming that they can actually uh, do it from cash and cash equivalents, cash flow, and our funds uh, from borrowing. Okay. So prescription transactions. Prescriptions grew 21%. 14% increase in MACs. I don't know what MAC means. Uh, prescription transaction revenue grew 22% year over year. Um, so modest growth quarter over quarter, but big time growth year over year. Subscription revenue. So this is subscribing to their uh, extra services in order to get additional discounts. Grew 79%. 51% increase in the number of plans. Favorable change in plan mix. Subscription revenue grew 100% year over year. So that business is doing good. Other revenue grew 196%, which is their manufacturing solutions. And on a percentage basis, so the, the core prescription business is still the lion's share of, of revenue. But you can see that other revenue is second uh, largest uh, grower. Okay. Net income was a, was a loss compared to a huge net loss last quarter. 200, a huge stock-based compensation based on the CEOs, uh, charitable stock donations in support of our philanthropic inventors. We offset that with taxes. Uh, okay, net margin was low. Okay, on an adjusted basis. Yeah, I hate this metric, but companies love to tout it. Adjusted net income is more interesting to me. So $40 million uh, in the quarter, and that figure was up. Our adjusted net income was up 10% year over year. Cash provided by operating activities. So cash from actually running uh, the business made up. So last year it was relatively flat. This number relatively stable uh, into payroll taxes related to the non-recurring. Yeah, so there's one-timey stuff in here. I'm not in love with the CEOs getting a massive equity award, but hey, that's how things go. Okay, so here's where things are about to turn bad, I'm assuming. 2021 guidance, 200 million, 25% year over year. So how does that compare, GDRX? Okay, so if we go to analysis tab, and this might be a little bit old, but Wall Street was expecting 203 million, and they said uh, 200 uh, million. So that is 2% lower. Um, than that guide. So that might be bothering uh, people. Adjusted EBITDA margin is whatever. Uh, for the full year, 23% uh, growth. So they don't give a number, but Wall Street is expecting 25% uh, percent growth. So in essence, this is a, you're not growing nearly as fast as we uh, was we we're expecting you uh, to. So this is a kind of market environment that people are not, uh, that Wall Street is not forgiving of uh Guidance misses in particular and uh, earnings misses. So this is just a weaker than expected report and a weaker than expected uh, guidance. And the growth rates are not as high as they would have been uh, otherwise. Uh, I'll dig through the call in a little bit, but disappointment? Uh, sure. Uh, catastrophe? I don't know about, uh, I don't know about catastrophe. Um Let's do a quick financial checkup. Nine hundred forty-one million in cash. So they have plenty of cash to do the uh, the share of a purchase program. Accounts receivable is up substantially. That's a little something to uh, to watch. Uh, Goodwill was up um, seventy million dollars. That's probably from their acquisition. Goodwill is not something that's a positive on the balance sheet. Um, but nine hundred million in cash. That's good. Uh, total liability seven hundred and seventy-five million. So they have more cash than they do total liabilities. 
and their biggest liability is debt, long-term debt net of $655 million. Went down a tiny little bit year over year. Uh, but the cash, uh, the, the balance sheet is, is four out of five, uh, I would give it. I would love it if the debt was gone completely, but this company can definitely afford to pay uh, to do that buyback. Um, cash provided by the opportunity for the year. So $178 million in cash from operating activities. Um, very minimal property and plants. Uh, if you want to include this as a cost, which Brian Stoffel does, by the way, he will be here later today at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we review Pubmatic. Um, but that's positive cash flow of $140 million. So that minus that and that positive cash flow of $140 million uh, for the year. And that figure was up uh, year over year. So cash flow is definitely heading in the right direction. Uh, direction. So let's just do another search. Full GDRX transcript. Um, this is one of the many places where you can get a, a transcript from the quarter. So let's just quickly uh, read through this. But I think I know what is the the gist here. Uh, millions of Americans used it. Uh, content. Yeah, we've sal- saved money. Americans all this money. 5 million users saved more than $500 compared to their pharmacy cash price. Huge value, supportive of the team. Rolled out new antivirals. Uh, we're very happy with the mission. Exactly. Okay. Talked about where we ended the year. We built our plan. We expect the second quarter would continue to be impacted by COVID. Would pick up in the third quarter as the undiagnosed conditions back outside clear. These assumptions... Uh, the reality is the effects of COVID have remained longer than we expected, and the resulting impact on our business has been greater than we anticipated. Karsten will discuss the qualifications. Knowledge that we underestimated the length of time COVID would impact our business. Having 24 months of smaller new therapy starts that's highly recurring due to refill frequency and the long-term nature of prescriptions created a compounding impact. Despite COVID lasting far longer, our full year revenue was still within our guidance range, just shy of 1% of the midpoint. We were able to deliver this performance thanks to our new fast-growing subscription offering and our even faster-growing pharma solutions. Both of these incredible businesses were nascent just a few years ago, today contributing significantly. That's why we like optionality. Uh, We continue to grow revenue, market share, and relationships, all of which are strong and stable. We didn't reduce our pace of investment. We're continuing to some of these products and markets like GoodRx Router, which we launched in the fourth quarter and believe puts us in the past to quickly becoming one of the largest platforms in the country. Already seen excitement for this. Uh, historically, we generate significant cash flow. Consensus decision to invest in our platform and our brand of last has resulted in record unaided awareness. So more consumers are becoming more familiar with the GoodRx brand name. We are committed to returning to historically adjusted EBITDA margins of 40% plus in the coming years. We expect annual revenue growth in the mid, longer term, we expect annual revenue growth in the mid 20s. Um, and plus our margins position us as a strong rule of 65 company, even as our scale grows. Let me explain that. There's a common rule of thumb with uh, recurring revenue software businesses in particular called the rule of 40. And it's basically the cash flow margin plus the top line growth rate. Anything over 40 is exceptional. They're saying they're going to be over 65 on an adjusted EBITDA basis. Not a perfect one-to-one, but either way, this is a company saying we expect 20% revenue growth plus profitability. That sounds good. Continue to build innovative products, plus making acquisitions. We're confident we can do the things. Okay, we grew revenue 39%, uh, and we're positive EBITDA. Lots of new customers, despite Omicron. New integration with Wheel, a digital healthcare platform that powers virtual primary and behavioral health centers. Okay. Another quarter of explosive growth, growing four times. Our fourth quarter net revenue retention rate was over 150%. We already read through that. Uh, new providers tools, scaled our platform. We started getting new data from DMD and IQVIA. Uh, new provider mode gradually to a subset of providers, with 90% of providers have been op- inclu- introduced opting in this new mode, representing 80,000 healthcare providers. Provi- seeing providers sharing discounts. We've seen providers in the platform sharing discounts with patients at a much higher rate, almost twice as frequently based on our results. We helped our huge provider base become more effectively at driving our prescription-related offerings. I mean, that sounds great. That sounds like their product is getting even stickier. 
uh, product searches, new. Yeah, we read that. We believe FlipMD has exciting capabilities that will extend both our engagement and increase the complement of services available through our platform, uh, drive growth, uh, even share. Yep, we are scaling the platform. Consumer behavior delivers unparalleled, very strong. Uh, got that. Uh, 2022 is four strategic areas. I think we read through those already. Uh, already. Deep our relationships, uh, add more customers, strengthen our advancements, and uh, such. Okay, we position the new. Pr uh, we increased prices for new gold subscribers in January to reflect the value that we are creating. We almost two years past the time we integrated Gold Thunder platform with a much larger subscriber base. It was time to elevate our pricing strategy. We found that Scrum subscribers are utilize high utilizations and save thousands of dollars per year while paying only around a hundred for their annual subscription. So they just raised prices. Um, are not offering enough. Uh, better for a free. We believe this change benefits our user base. Get users to the offer that make the most sense for them. We put more target approach allows us to invest in gold and offer that deliver more value to an attractive user base. Lots of opportunities, huge market opportunities. Thank you for that. Okay, now the CFO time, 39% revenue growth. Prescription transactions grew 21%. 14% year over year in monthly active customers. So transactions grew faster than customers. So their customers are using the, the product more frequently. Okay. Uh, where comparable period include stereocycle script cycles, MACs, which was reported in the first quarter. Okay. Overall impact by COVID. Uh, growth in new market towards the end of the fourth quarter as Omicron's impact grew and started off soft volumes in January to uh, December. January patterns we, we haven't seen in recent years. Flu season started aggressively. Uh, referral standpoint. While third quarter is almost back to 2019 levels, Q4 was disappointingly lower than 2019 by single digit percentage, which presented an unfortunate headwind that was not anticipated. Uh, most of COVID affects a cumulative two-year business is much longer period than we have uh, um, expected. We can't make up for these instantly, these cohorts instantly, um, but we're built through physicians and pharmacists has rebounded. Subscription revenue still grew rapidly. 1.2 million subscription plans, 1.6 million members. Other revenue grew 196% momentum. Uh, cost of revenue was 6.5% of revenue. So their gross margin is 93.5%. It's just an incredible uh, gross margin company. That problem number is going to come down over time as they shift to different uh, services, uh, though. Higher outsourced services. Technology expenses were all up. Yeah, we kind of ran through the, the numbers uh, of what they're doing. Uh, one time e net losses that, that won't be repeating. Uh, they had a tax valuation allowances, one time e uh, stuff. Uh, another of options remained uh, definitive. Okay, 35% year over year growth, 30% adjusted deep at the margin. That's a number that they're just going to tout. We estimate the impact of depressed new therapy stocks led to cumulative revenue recognition of approximately 70 million to 140 million plus since COVID ban weighed significantly. So that's the number, that, that is the amount of revenue that they think that they've been impacted by because of COVID. That's a non, that's a, that's a, that's a big, that's a big number. Uh, okay. We authorized 250 million bar worth of common stock, which will limit dilution associated with employee equity. All right. So it's not going to reduce the share count. It's just going to limit uh, dilution. Um, First quarter, 25% growth. Uh, we expect other revenues to grow 75, 70 to 90%. Um, transaction prescriptions for 16 to 18%. Uh, quarter over quarter. While our revenue guidance reflects a quarter over quarter decline, uh, we expect quarter over quarter growth in prescription transactions, uh, other stuff. Okay. Fourth quarter is seasonally strong due to a year end spend increase. However, not all the fourth quarter revenue is expected to be recurring. However, not all of the fourth quarter's revenue is expected to be occurring in the same magnitude as the first quarter. Okay. The spend will decrease. We expect a quarter of a quarter decline. Yep, yep, yep. Boy, these guys just put out so many words to, to really go over uh, what they're saying. Uh, they're going into the $30 billion manufacturing solutions, Tam. 
which we believe will continue to grow. Even with us offering three times year over year growth and 150, we are still not anywhere penetrated anywhere close to 1%. So that means a big time opportunity uh, for them. Uh, high high margin non prescription transaction revenue percent has grown by about 2.5%. Um, this operating leverage from our increased scale showing will start showing results later this year as it drives our expected higher adjusted EBITDA margin exit rate in 2022. So they're not going to be as profitable at the start of the year, but they expect that margin to increase over time as they continue to scale. Uh, I like the. Uh, we're using the gold to focus on members and there we're increasing the price from $9.99 per month to and $20 per month uh, for families. This is the first price change that we've talked about. We finished the year with 774,000 gold members and 20% individuals revenue of $13 million. Okay. So that's the gist. The gist is for me, um, revenue growth was good, but not as good as they had uh, expected. Uh, COVID was a near-term headwind. Their other bets that they've been making are clearly paying off. They have a $250 million share repurchase uh, program. And let's also just take a look at uh, valuation for uh, for those purposes. Okay, so uh, sales last year were $745 million. The company's current market cap is six million dollars so it's trading at under nine times sales and remember this is a company with a 95 percent uh gross margin uh very very high gross margin so their gross profit was let's just call that that minus that roughly 700 million dollars trading at about under 10 times gross profit under 10 times uh, gross profit on an earnings basis, the company is expected to earn 45 cents this year. I'm guessing that's adjusted and 60 cents uh, next year. So the math on that is it's trading at about 34 times forward uh, earnings. And this company, I think there are reasons to believe that there's operating leverage um, ahead of this uh, business. So if the company can return, uh, can keep going at a 20 to 25% uh, percent growth rate plus improve its margins, uh, today's price could be very, very uh, compelling. So I see this more as a communications issue and a guidance issue than I do that the business is falling apart uh, or anything like that. So uh, that's my my thoughts on uh, the quarter. Uh, good RX, bad stocks. Um we well, review Okta and uh, five more, praying for an acquisition by, by Amazon. <laughs> um, COVID should end up helping GoodRx. Uh, yeah, possibly. Um, although it seems to be more of a depression on uh, customer acquisition if customers aren't going out to their to their pharmacy as much as they were uh, predicted to. Uh, but that's my, my takeaway. As a reminder, I am a shareholder of this company. And while it is disappointing to see the company's growth isn't as high as it's uh, expected to be, the company is still profitable. It's still rolling out new products and services, which are clearly having an impact. And this I view as more of a expectations and valuation reset than I do the business uh, is, is falling is falling apart. So I'm personally not going to be selling my shares anytime soon, especially at uh, today's prices. But I would like to see another quarter or two and see how things develop to see if indeed COVID is a one timey thing that's going to uh, taper off or indeed if this business is in more trouble than this stair price would uh, would indicate. So unless I overlook something uh, huge, I think there's plenty of reasons to be continue to be uh, bullish on, on good RX. So there you have it. Uh, I hope that you uh, found this to be useful. If you did, in 30 minutes, I'm going to be back with Brian Stoffel. He is back in action, and we're going to be reviewing Pubmatic. So hope you found this useful. See you then. Brian, out. <laughs>